Hey, this is James Calm the guy on the bike. Here's Matt Arnett. Hey there. <laughs> Welcome. We're actually coming to you from the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, we've got a special treat for you today. We're going to run in and take a look at uh, probably one of the preeminent collections of African American outsider art, Southern Southern outsider art. Art. Art with a capital A. Tell us a little bit about the collection. Can we walk down here a yes. little bit? We can look at some stuff. Now, There's Bill, and there is Bill. Your dad has been collecting this work for how many years now? About 25 years? Yeah, a little longer than that. This is probably the largest and most complete collection of this kind of work that I've ever seen. Now, one of the famous artists that they have worked with and collect is Thornton Dial. Thornton Dial also does a lot of more sculptural work. Do we have a title on this piece here? It's called Crosses to Bear. It's Crosses um, to Bear. It's about the World Trade Center. The uh, series, this is part of a series of 14 pieces that he did and at the time, started at the day the Trade Center was hit and worked on it for the next six or eight months. Now, Thornton Dial was a, a metal worker that lives down in Alabama? He was. He was he's a metal worker. He's, he's now 80. And uh, he never learned to read and write, but he spent his life working in factories and making art behind the scenes. He didn't know the word art, but he made things that reflected his views on, on issues in society, and he made them basically for himself. He was uh, afraid because of things people had told him that if anybody ever knew what he was thinking about he'd be in big trouble. So think think and do it, but don't let anybody catch on to what you're doing because then you get into trouble. All right, that's kind of a good lesson for any artist in certain ways. It would have served me well <laughs> if I could have learned from it. Now, you discovered him, you were saying, back in the late, late 80s, 86, 87? Yeah, yeah, through another artist that I had gotten to know and respect a great deal, an artist in Birmingham named Lonnie Holly. Lonnie Holly. Maybe we'll get a chance to see some of his work later. Mm -hmm. This really is a uh, an astounding collection that you've got here. Do you have any idea how many pieces by Thornton Dial you have? Yeah, I've got most, I've got all his pieces other than ones that have been sold or given away. Um, and they're a total of about 400 up to wow. now, but he's still making some things. He also draws, so he's done quite a number of drawings. He's done uh, in his lifetime, and we have many of those, he's done about 3,000 works on paper. Now these pieces are all, they're on wood panels, but he, he really is a master of uh, collage or assemblage. He's using uh, a fabric cords, different kinds of cloth, well, wood part, things that he finds. He's part of a tradition that there's much to be learned from and about that goes back to slavery times that has to do with creating a, a, an identity, a social identity that encapsulates ideals and philosophies and religions. Black people had their entire identity taken from them when they came here as slaves. and and uh, there was a need within a very disjointed culture to create something that would, could represent a stability. And, and it was done through music and art. It's quite a fascinating thing that isn't understood yet in this country, how it developed. But a, a, a visual arts tradition developed along with the music that is not about just purely entertainment or recreation. It's, it's uh, works which which encapsulate the entire belief systems of the people who made them, which were not uniform from Virginia to Texas. They were certainly, it, it changed from community to community and family to family, but individuals took it upon themselves to do these things, to create the music, to create textiles, and to create visual art, which is part of a, of a tradition, just like you find in any old, uh, system, any civilization, whether it be in Asia or Africa or North and South America. Um, 
and Dial and Lonnie Holly and thousands and thousands of other artists who don't call themselves artists, but that's what they are, have come out of that. And this is part of that. And it's just come to light after the Civil Rights Movement, because prior to that time, black people kept their ideas and their works as hidden as possible because it was very well understood. And it's still to some, it's a valid thought even now that works which could be viewed as subversive would also be viewed as dangerous. And, uh, and at that time, I wouldn't say it's true today, but at that time, black people were not supposed to have ideas of their own. They were supposed to pick cotton or build things or cut down things or whatever their job was, but thinking was not allowed. And this grew out of a, a, a very subversive but very viable uh, visual arts tradition, which, as I say, came to light, if anybody was looking, very slowly with the onset of the civil rights movement. Right, here's a beautiful piece of Skeeta quilt in here, and you've also been uh, instrumental and probably were the person that uh, discovered the Guy Ben quilters and uh, got them some exposure and attention in the, the higher cultural establishment of the art world? Well, yeah, Gee's Bend was part of that same cultural continuum that Dial and Lonnie Holly and the thousands and probably at some point or another there have been millions of people who created art as part of that system. And on the surface it was merely decorative, but when you look beyond it, which we spent 40 years doing, uh, there's a much deeper motivation, just like there is with all art. Very little art historically was made strictly for entertainment. It was, it, it represents. This all has a deep cultural meaning and a uh, spiritual meaning. And right, spiritual, political, social, and, um, and we found. This is a beautiful piece here with, and I'll point this out, that what looks like flowers here are actually uh, paint cans that he's, he's peeled open and you get the the raw, pure colors of what was inside his paint cans, and he's reused them and recycled them. So that's a very, very striking piece. I like this one. There's a there's a pretty strong relationship between those quilts, or the quilts of the Black South, and the visual arts of the sort that we're looking at here. They're all made of found materials, and of course, it'd be easy to just assume that black people had to use what was thrown away or was of no value, and that is certainly true, but it was also material of choice. Most of these artists still are not interested in going to the art su supply store because these materials over a period of hundreds of years have taken on specific symbolism which stretches all the way across the culture from state to state. Well, I actually see a, a similarity to the kind of work that a lot of younger artists are doing these days. They're you know, doing, I guess, what is called abject art or pathetic art, but they're, they're going out and finding things that have been thrown away, trying to recycle them. But here we've got a bunch of artists here in the South that have been doing this for hundreds of years, hundreds and, and people, and you know, that have been graduating from art schools maybe right. started doing it five or six years ago because now the, uh, the environmental movement and uh, trying to think green, and uh, also I think a lot of people are thinking that art history has come to an end and we're just left with sort of a junk pile and so people are sort of, or young artists are pulling out this stuff and mm -hmm. deciding they have to recycle it. But I think this really does give them an example of uh, how they could do this in a very profound way. Well, if you look at the history of this country and the cultural history, uh, there's no question that a great deal of things that we do that are accepted in the canon and, and generally attributed to intellectual, quote unquote, white people in the establishment community uh, came from uh, their exposure to things done by black people away from the establishment. That's certainly true of American music. People understand that finally, although people didn't want to believe it at first, but all the great American music, uh, I can't say all, most of it originated in the black South. And, uh, and then was homogenized and modified and made it out into the world through white musicians. But now we understand where it came from and what the greatest of it was. And the same thing's true of visual arts. People are not aware of that yet. That's and if true. If I start preaching too much, you, somebody's going to stuff a sock in my mouth. Jeez, we're going to uh, come back here and do part two. Give him some water, 
Let's go.